What's up, people? How's it going? And really, really, really quick, before we even get started, I'm just going to do this. New York's Tech Valley region is home to a video game development cluster, ranging from small independent studios to internationally recognized names. One Upstate is a new developer expo coming to Albany, New York in August of 2023. Join us for a day of panels and speakers, networking opportunities, vendors, and an after party that will be all about the games. One Upstate, a celebration of games and the people who make them. Visit oneupstate.com for more information. I got one more for you. Snakes have roamed the earth for more than 100 million years. What happens when one snake partakes in one of man's favorite vices? Let, let, me, let me make sure I understand you correctly. You blew weed smoke into a snake's face and somehow it gave him mutant powers? And now he's eaten all of our edibles and all of our weed and he's gone on a fucking killing spree? Coming on 420, this snake gets baked. Blazing your way in 2025. I can't fucking wait. The fuck? That was funny. I can't wait. Dadpool, my man, my homie, was good. How's it hey, going? Hey, Dadpool. How's it going? <clears throat> but that looked fun. That it was something fun. I would buy. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. I can't wait. I can't wait for the Indiegogo, or whatever they do to drop. I can't wait for that to happen. And I'm just saying, man, on that indie wave. But how's it going, though, man? How you doing? Doing good. Got out of work early. Got to watch a fan made film here. Enjoy some time off. Hey, nice. How about you? <clears throat> I'm good, man. I'm good. Just chilling, you know. Same as you. Got to. Watch this short, and now we're just just getting ready to discuss it. Okay. Chilling, chilling, Dadpool. Getting ready to talk some Friday the 13th Death Curse, which you can find on YouTube. Link is in the description. It's also posted in the Horror Wars 30 group. You can go there and find it. The group is private now, but you can still, you could, it's a visible, but it's private. Just because of the last time where it got deleted and all that shit. So I was like, let me try to take a little bit more precautions. There's a couple more things I'm going to add for rules. Nothing big, nothing crazy. But, no, new, no nude pictures. Unless you're sturdy. No, I'm not doing <laughs> People Hi, ladies. Post nudity. <laughs> post nudity on uh, Facebook. That's a no no. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. Oh, I meant to pull this up for you guys. Friday the 13th Death Curse, like I was saying. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Link is in the description. And before we even dive into this, early rating. No reason, just your early rating. I probably get this one like a three. Okay. How about you? Um, I'm actually going to say 
four and a half. Four and a half. It was four and a half. Dad pulls that three, which isn't. I mean, I don't. Depending on how you look at your ratings before we even dive into this more, like you, as everyone knows, my ratings for any type of movie, fan film, independent film, right? You know, Hollywood budget. I don't care. It goes from a negative ten to a positive ten. So the way I, the way I look at it in a sense is like any positive number is still a good rating. Like I give them credit for what they did because it is yeah. a Friday fan film, but I had a lot of issues with it. All right, let's go. Go ahead, shoot. All right, they should have called this uh, Jason in the Jungle, pretty much. I know this was shot in South Africa, and you had like all the New Zealanders doing their version of the Friday movie. Mm-hmm. And that, it just didn't feel like a Friday the Thirteenth fan film. Like it wasn't at a camp setting. Like I said, it wasn't a jungle. All I could think of was, you know, instead of like the song "George of the Jungle," I could think is Jason, Jason, Jason of the Jungle. Not a friend to you and me. Watch, watch out! out. He'll throw you into that tree. <laughs> or watch out for that machete. Watch out for that machete. Yep. <laughs> but again, like some of the kills were pretty cool. They did kind of take a weird CGI kill, which didn't make sense. Uh, the music was off. The music was but, odd. That is one thing I can. That is like, I didn't mind the way they did the story and all that. They did it the, their own way. That doesn't right. bother me. But the music took me out of it because I'm like, mm-hmm. at the very least, with the music, again, if you could have, if you could have, with using the music, pay homage to the originals and just kind of use something. That kind of twist, you know what I mean? Right. Because this just, it didn't, that really pulled me from it right there. I was like, this doesn't feel like a Friday the 13th movie. Not even the fan film Friday the 13th because of that music right there. The rest of the stuff really, it didn't bother me too much. It's like they took Asian music, merged it with the Jason, the the, the cha-cha-cha kill-kill theme. Yeah. Kind of warped it into like their own version, which, okay, I understand you were trying to do something new. But it didn't work. It just didn't fit. It, didn't. it, didn't. it was odd. I was just like, what is this? Pamela Voorhees was a great part of this. Oops, I didn't do that. Great part of this movie. Yeah, he was definitely stiff. And uh, a lot of kills were off screen, which kind of sucked. He did a couple cool on screen kills. Mm-hmm. So they had some cool spe- effects, but then there's that one where the guy gets the machete through his chest, and you could tell it was like CGI'd. Yeah. It just looked fake, and it was it looked awful. I'm like, Ew. It's like, don't do that then. Do something different. And like the accents didn't bother me because I know they were from a different country. But again, you could have said, you know, all right, I'm going overseas. I'm going over to the United States to go to uh, Camp Crystal Lake. I'm going to go to Camp Blood or whatever. Mm-hmm. But. Again, the car, the steering wheel is on the opposite side, so you know you're not in the U.S. Because it takes place in New Jersey, but for some reason, we're not in New Jersey. We're in some place else. Yeah. For all that, you might as well just say where you really are. Right. And that honestly, that right there would have probably fixed some of the issues for you with it being in the jungle and how it was. Or just their force, whatever you want to call it over there. But anyways, that probably fix the issues for you because it's like, okay, so they're they're shooting it over. They're saying they're shooting it over here, but they're also stating in the movie. They're in such and such. You know what I mean? They're in such and such, and there's a – maybe they think it's a copycat. How did Jason get here? Who knows? Who cares? It doesn't matter. Just make it there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the dream sequence was kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, just like some of it just felt rushed, the uh, the lighting was off in some spots where it was nice and easy to see. Some yeah. parts were very hard. Like we did get to see kind of what like Jason looked like without his mask for like a brief second, but it looked. But if, you odd. know that you know what that could be too, though. It could be to where they they only had enough to maybe do a partial of right. his face, so they showed mm-hmm. just enough. With his mask, because the rest could have been just not looking great, or maybe nothing too much. And so also I too, get why they did that. If you notice his hands, uh, they were just painted black. <clears throat> there are some parts that were still white, 
Like, he's supposed to be the undead Jason because mm. he had the whole death look and everything. Mm. Some of his hands were unpainted, so you could kind of see that they were kind of... I know they were trying to go for the dead look, but he could at least put, like, gloves on and, like, put like, yes. holes to make his fingers kind of look kind of rotting or whatnot. But he just had his black hands, and they looked painted to me. Yeah. It, it just didn't look right to me. Yeah, the, I'd say just put on a pair of black gloves. Yeah. Put on, on a, a pair, pair of black, black gloves. Or he had the work gloves on in the other Friday the 13th movies. You can leave the work gloves on and you just, you know, maybe put a couple holes in there to make them look kind of rotted or dilapidated. Yep. And then, you know, there you go. Mm-hmm. You know, <clears> and that way, and then that way, with that too, like say if it's because of finances, then you can kind of get maybe a little better makeup to kind of make it look because you only have to do a couple, you know, because you only for a couple holes here and a couple holes here as far as that type of. But I don't know, man. They did what they could. I'll they give did them what a... they could, but. And and on top of that, I'll say this, too, just to shoot them some bail, because, again, they're in a whole nother, on a whole nother continent. Um, I, I'm not saying they don't have anything over there because that'd be ignorant, but I don't know what supplies they had there as far as that kind of stuff goes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know how big. I don't know how big horror is out there, so that that's my biggest thing. I'm sure I know there's a ton of fans there, but I don't oh, yeah, know how sure. big it is out there. You know what I mean? Right. Compared to here, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I can only compare it to what I experience and what I see and what I live at. So it's no disrespect to anybody. I'm just saying, what compared to here is it is big? I hope it is. I hope it's even bigger. Shit. Just because, like, I want horror to be that big. You know what I mean? Oh, I like, that there's horror everywhere, which is crazy. oh yeah, I know. All I know around the that. world and everything. I love it. Which I want to start. I want to start seeing more international horror movies. By the way, especially independent ones, but they have to have. So, listen, I will accept those, but they have to have subtitles, please. Because <laughs> yeah, you gotta have the subs because if you can't understand what the fuck they're saying, it takes you out of the movie. Yes, I forgot one man. movie I was watching. It was so bad. And there was a part where they were speaking Spanish. Mm-hmm. Which, okay, I understand where you are and everything's going. But again, put subtitles because I don't know what the fuck they're saying. And, yeah. it was whole, and the whole scene, it wasn't like just a one quick scene. It was like a legit conversation between the two characters. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> I turned my attention. I'm putting on my phone. I'm doing it. And I also, I miss certain things. I'm like, well, this. You know what's funny is I. <laughs> So I was watching, actually, for tomorrow's podcast, Tekken 2 over on Popcorn and Pints. I should say later tonight. Dadpool's going to be on with us, by the way. Shout out to him. But uh, I was watching Tekken 2. And there was a couple parts. It was actually one scene, maybe a minute or two long, where they were speaking Japanese, right? This is just what Tubi told me. So I'm like, shit. So I paused the movie. I'm like, all right, let me go to my thing. He's turn the subtitles on. So I turn the subtitles on to hit play. I swear to you guys, Tubi, the subtitles popped up and said, speaking Japanese. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, get, that's, I know that. I could. Uh, uh, but like, this is weird. Like in the original Star Wars movies, when the aliens were talking, like when Jabba the Hutt was on screen, they didn't have subtitles. But they would always repeat what he was saying. Like when he was going against Han Solo, and he's like, Han Solo would go, well, Jabba would be saying, you know, blah, 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 blah. And Han Solo go, yes, I know you want your money, or yes, I know mm-hmm. you want this. So you know he's there's a conversation you, you can understand. Mm-hmm. But if you're just having two people just talking in their native language without any subs, it's just, well, what are they talking about? Are they and talking that, about goes, what goes they had that day? Though, too, though. We're not just talking about foreign films from us. We're talking about foreign us being the foreigners and you right. watching our films, too. This needs to be universal to the point i mean they should i feel like it should be up to date to the point to where every movie should have however, however many languages there are around the world that where these movies travel mm-hmm. that le- somehow there should be subtitles for it I, even I, with like close captioning for the for the deaf if yes. you can't hear it give them the give them the option to close read the subtitles and go from there boom yeah so then 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 i mean then it's a double it's like okay so we're having it in whatever language you need it to re- be read in and then for the for the uh, people who don't understand this language, they're good. And then like, for the I, hearing impaired, they're good as well. Like, I have some foreign films, but if you watch it in the dubbing, the dubbing is so bad. Oh, oh my the, gosh. The, the, the lips and the wording don't match. 
It not only you that, away. Though, not only that though, but like, even if the dubbing is good, I still like it with the foreign film because it's it's like reading a live story. You know what I mean? Right. Like you're reading what's going on, and you're and you're you're like. Once you watch enough foreign films, you kind of you can kind of lock you can get, in. You can get the idea of reading and watching at the same time. Yeah, at the same time without, without missing anything. And, and right, it gets you, you to the point to where it. it gets you to the point to where you're so locked into like what's going on and everything. And you're just like, oh shit, oh my god, oh my god, and boom, something happens. You're like, oh gosh, but you're so like focused and locked in because you're you're reading every single word and you're watching the screen, you're studying the screen as you're doing this, mm-hmm. and you're just like, boom, and then all of a sudden... It makes you pay attention to the screen, too. Yeah. It makes you pay attention to the movie. Yeah, Deadpool, the, the explosion in this yes. just made no sense, too. That the was... Whole... That part bothered me more than anything in this movie. Like, that, to me, was the worst part of the movie, was that explosion. It was unnecessary. Like, I, I'd... And the fire looked bad when they mm-hmm. when it first showed it. After the explosion, of course, the fire looks better. I wasn't mad when Jason put his hand up. I was actually no. I want that because it's Jason. He shouldn't be killed by an explosion. Guy, you know how many times he's been blown up? <laughs> he, he was taking that guy out so easy. Yeah, and I'm the not, way he got I'm, stabbed I'm not, too was I'm more not, the heart area. Yeah, I'm not mad at him surviving though. I guess because it is like I mean it was just a handful of people in the film anyway. You know what I mean? Not even a handful. So it was like we gotta have at least one survivor. Out of these three, four people, I forgot how many people were in there. Well, you had your main character. That was it. All the rest were all like side characters, and yeah, well, that's what I mean. Otter, so pretty much that was it. But yeah, the the explosion, like you're saying, though, Dad, but the explosion was just like why? Again, weird bad CGI. They you have these cool practical effects here and there, mm-hmm. and you get this weird wonky CGI with the explosion, with the machete kill through the chest. The truck hitting Jason too. It was just a lot of weird weirdness happening in this one. Yeah, yeah. And there's ways of doing it, but I mean, I'm sure they tried their best. And I, I will say this: if you guys do watch this, and I hope you do, because I did have, I did have somebody, uh, you know, they they dropped in the comments after the after the episode was over because that's when they seen it. And I'm gonna have them on for an interview. Can't wait. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be exciting. I'm gonna check them out. You know. They actually did commentary for their film, too, which I'm going to check out. And they have a podcast, which I'm going to check out before they come on. That's going to be fun. I believe that's going to be August 8th. So, people, be on the lookout for that. <laughs> yeah, we see a little mushroom cloud. Like, he's in a he's in a shed with gasoline, turpentine, and a bunch of our, like, just <laughs> liquid. You don't need a mushroom cloud. Come on. You don't. It's over the top. And you can see in the lake, and you see this giant mushroom. You're like, mm-hmm. really? You didn't need that. You don't need that. That took away from a pretty, in my opinion, a pretty decent movie. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It was a pretty decent movie. There were some hiccups. Yes, there were some things that could have been fixed and patched up. But overall, it wasn't a bad movie. And you take out that explosion, it's even better. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not saying it's great, but it's not. It's it's a rough film. Yes. But I'm not saying it's terrible either. Like it's no weird. Well, at least the good thing it's it's only 20, 22 minutes, mm-hmm. so it's a quick watch. So that, you're not stuck to the whole thing. I and and again, I feel to their credit, I'm trying this whole positive stuff out, people. I'm trying my best, but to their credit, and, and I'm still because this this you know what I mean. This way, I'm not just bashing a film all the time. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna tell you what I like about it here and there. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go like, especially like just because it's it's it makes for con- good conversation anyway. I'm gonna explain myself. So, like I said, the explosion and the music. Though actually, you know the explosion and the music is tied for me. The explosion and the music is tied for me. Now that I remember the music because the music really takes you out of it. Like it just makes no sense. <laughs> exactly. Like, I, I, I don't, and as much as I love music in horror films, if it's if it's the right music. You're better off just not having any music in there. Mm-hmm. You, or, I mean, if anything, you got somebody chilling, listen to some rock. Some rock and roll always works. Mm-hmm. And be, and I'm only saying that because it's been played in Friday the 13th films here and there. So, I mean, part eight <laughs> on the boat. The mm-hmm. guitar skill. But just in general. Or, you know. Oh. 
Agreed. Agreed. That was and like you said earlier, uh, Dadpool. That was one of the better things of this film is the Pamela Voorhees. Which I'll say this: all these fan films that had Pamela Voorhees involved, one way or another, or there have been how it was in this movie, or just her head, or whatever the case may be, portrayed it very well. The look, the visual, or sorry, it's the same thing. The visuals, the sounds, like everything, they they portrayed it very, very, very well. All the way across the board from the films that I've seen so far up to this point. And a little nod to uh, Adrian King there from part two. Oh, Ginny. The woman had the locket. Ginny, yes. But also, too, that, again, part makes sense. Part family member. If she, why does she have a locket with her picture in it? And, again, this guy's going over. uh, Was she over there in in the UK? Was she over there in somewhere overseas i th- i th- but like you said though they're taking it as they were doing it in jersey just right where they live so i guess we could shoot them some bail for that but again the better route would have been just make jason just be from here and make mm-hmm. it your own story yep like if you, say, if you have a locket with her picture in it maybe he was a relative of her like that was maybe That's his possible. mom or was a sister or a cousin. Or, aunt or a cousin, yeah. Yeah, but they don't bring that up at all. It's just her looking at the locket and then says, you know, don't go there. You're going to get doomed. And like, mm-hmm. where are they going? I know they're throwing a little nod to that, but that nod yeah. needs to lead to something. And and again, I was, I'll, I'll say it again. I'll say it again. Bring Jason where you're shooting this movie. Meaning, if you're shooting it in a whole another country, a whole another continent, bring Jason there to you, so the story can make more sense to your to the surroundings, to to the culture there, to every all of that stuff. You know what I mean? Because then it's like, okay, now I see why this is here. Now I see why this is like this. You can even make it to a point to where if it's anywhere, you can say even New Orleans, somewhere here in America, probably somewhere in Florida too. But as far as like the whole like voodoo type of stuff, you know what I mean? Whatever you'd call it with that. And boom, that's why Jason's here. Something just whatever, some sort of ritual is what I'm getting at. And boom, Jason is he, this is why Jason's here. And then he's this is he's reacting to this. Boom boom. And whatever. But like Jason know. in New York, he got on a boat. <laughs> Killed people on the boat, landed in New York. He was frozen yeah. in, in time for Jason X. That's how he got in outer space. Gotta give us something to see how we got there. Yeah. Or just make the story be from there like it originated from there. Again. Right. You do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Actually, actually that'd be kind of dope. <laughs> Honestly, that'd be kind of dope. Like seeing something from another continent, another country, whatever, taking a story like this, but making it in their version of it. Like, say, keeping the basics of Jason, even if they change the name, but keep the hockey. Or say they still keep the name as Jason. Just in whatever language, you know, whatever. But keep the Jason, keep the mask, but the rest of it, they can kind of, yeah. You guys know what I'm getting with this. But I'll say this, though, people. I'm going to say with all these fan films I reviewed so far, check them out. I'm not going to tell you. I'm never going to tell you not to watch a movie, but especially an independent movie, especially fan films and stuff like that. So definitely check them out. Again, link is in the description. Link is in the description. So you can just go in there and check it on out. Check it on if you haven't. And like Matt said, it's only 22 minutes. So it's not like it's a super long movie. It's not a super long watch, which is beneficial because had it been a super long movie, then I think it would have been a bad movie. Mm-hmm. Had it been like a regular hour, hour and a half, let's say hour and a half, hour 15. I'm not saying they can't accomplish that, but where that one was going, that particular film, it wouldn't have. No. Nah. Yeah, you have to give us more characters. Yes, just definitely. have them then show up, and that's it. Yeah. yeah, well, well, I mean, I guess say they had the budget and they had the time to do a film that's like an hour and a half, hour and mm-hmm. fifteen. Then I'm sure they would have. Of course, you know, you have more people to play more characters. You can kind of have more of a build up too, where you can have kind of a backstory to a, a couple of the characters, at least the group, or at least the character, the main character too. Yeah, like say, let's say the main. Because usually there's a few people. You have your main couple, main few. Then you have your... And for, uh, out of your main few, there may be like one to two survivors, if that. 
And then you have your randos that you just kind of knock off throughout the film just so you have some cool kills, but still have the story going. Yep. But, hey, man. They, I, again, they tried. They tried. Peter Jason would work. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It would be, it would be interesting. It would be very interesting. So, Voodoo Jason is another idea, people. <laughs> Voodoo Jason. Voodoo Jason. Good work. Like, I thought of a cool way to get Jason to another spot. Hmm. <clears throat> is this something you want to talk on on air or off air? I don't know, because it hasn't been done before. So, let's talk and, about it off air. Cause we're yeah. Gonna this up. We're going to wrap this one up anyway. Let's talk about it off air, just in case. All right, I like, case. that's a cool idea. I just thought of it. And then that will get him into a specific area, like into like uh, a different ah, state. Ah, ah, ah. Hold it. Hold yep, it. I'll hold it. I'll hold it. I'll be slip. quiet. Don't slip. But guys, yeah. this is going to be a quick one. Short episode, short movie. Um, listen, go check out you and your horror movies. Go check out Dadpool. Go check out Worst Damn Gamer right now because I believe he is still going strong. Last I checked, he was streaming for like six hours. So go check him out if he's still streaming. Go show him some love. Go give him some support. Go give him some energy. Um, check out the whole entire Z Network. Check out Smart NATO. Those guys have an amazing wrestling podcast. If you're a wrestling fan, that is the podcast to go to. They watch from the indies to WWE, AEW, and everything in between. Go check those guys out. I promise you enjoy it. Again, go check out you and your horror movies. Go check out Dadpool. He's on Twitch, too. Go check out Dadpool on Twitch. He's streaming and shit. Um, go to horrorstarstudy.com. You can get all of my stuff. And again, go check out these fan films that we've been reviewing. Go check them out. Go show them some love. Leave some comments. Like, share. You know, do all that stuff to get their eyes on them. Even if you don't like them. If you don't like them, you can put the dislike. Leave a comment. But don't just say this movie sucked. Give a reason. Yeah. Give a reason why you didn't like it. And if you don't like our ratings, go watch it anyway, because it's you might like the movie. It's all opinion. It, you could be like watching, be like, "Oh my god, this movie was awesome," or "This movie, what well, they're right," or vice versa. And yeah. Don't let any of my positivity or negativity towards a movie deter you from enjoying the movie. Besides Blood Lake, all the other ones, <laughs> nah. Don't 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 take it there. You don't gotta worry about that. Until there's something that destroys Blood Lake, not just beats it, but has to destroy it off the pedestal. Which I don't see it happening. I kind of hope it doesn't happen because it could be like that legendary thing. You know what I mean? But at the same time, we'll see. Sturdy's gonna get a T-shirt that says, "I watched Blood Lake and survived." That's a good idea. <laughs> That's a good idea. But uh, again, guys, thank you guys for tuning in. You guys have a great night. I'll see you in your nightmares. Good night, Deadpool. Good night, everybody. Appreciate appreciate you all. Peace. All right, man. I'm going to send you.